Well, the first coming, in terms of the first coming of Jesus, was of course the story. Um, gives you the blueprint, the outline, the picture of um, someone who's right with God. As a child, I don't mean he's perfected. You know, why callest thou me good? But he's definitely the way to go. That's the whole point of the story. This is an example of the way to be. Not what you will be, what you can be now. To get to what you will be. The second coming is the getting to where you will be. Namely, your transformation into the example. In other words, when you find that his spirit is in you, which is what he's prayed for in John 17, that he be in us, and the Heavenly Father too. That's the second coming, your um, conversion, if you like, from a sort of Christian uh, jargon point of view. It's not a conversion in a sense, it's a new creation. You're a brand new person, brand new man. <laughs> and he's prayed in John 17 that the Holy Spirit abide in us forever. He and the Father abide in us forever. You see, you are spirit. And when your spirit combines, if you like, is joined, abides with God, is sanctified, set apart, to be holy, um, blended with, abiding with God, heart, soul, mind and strength. You're sanctified. That's what sanctified means, set apart. You're kept from all evil, which is what he's prayed for. Keep them from the evil. Not taken out of the world. This isn't something, you know, you have to die to go to heaven to do it, in the sense of the body dying and so on. Not at all. Pray not that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil. In other words, sanctify them. How are we sanctified? by this eternal presence of our Heavenly Father in us. It's, uh, it's, it's picturing what's happening and what you are, you are spirit. And you become a son of God in the sense of the conversion or the being born again this receiving of um, Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit into your heart. Quite simply, you're made complete, what we've called perfect. You are now a complete person. In what sense? You live forever. That's the completeness of it. Being here then in this universe of material, you know, time, space, matter, and change, uncertainty, and so on, good and evil, has achieved the great purpose that God has it made for to uh, bring children to glory. 
we're glorified. Why are we glorified? Because of this magnificent change that's happened in us. We've uh, come into a beautiful eternal relationship with God. And if we are now born into that relationship, wow. How fantastic. Thank you, Heavenly Dad. So John 17 is about, I mean, put very simply, coming to know what you truly value. This is life eternal, to know thee, the only true God. You personify in your mind, in your realization, your thinking, what you truly value, the ideal, comes to you. The first coming is in the declaration, in the story. You read it, or you hear it, or it's performed in front of you in some Medieval madrigal, was it called? The street fair, um, fair a street a plays where they acted out parts of the biblical story. The thoughts have come to you, and they guide you in the way you wish to go. It's as simple as that, really, isn't it? But it's put in this story of Jesus and his teachings, or the description of his um, presented life. So you receive these good ideas, and they start to affect the whole of your life. That you become heavenly yourself. The presence of these thoughts, which are the evidence of, or if you like what we call the spirit, who you are. As a man thinks, so he is. And the story blesses us in that it affects our thinking. That we become glorious, heavenly person. An eternal person. By the grace and the goodness of God. which we understand to be, in this sense, our Heavenly Dad. Spiritually speaking, we've been sanctified, set apart, eternally schooled, eternally blessed, by the presence of our eternal God. Most wonderful spirit indeed. Thank you, Heavenly Dad. You see, from the beginning of this little recording, nine minutes at the minute, but it's going to be longer, <laughs> not much longer, I hope. But, well, the world, and Marshall in particular, has held stories, fiction in contempt, but it's the stories in our society, the myths, that are the foundation of our beliefs, that have changed the whole outcome of what we call civilization. And indeed, in an analytical way, I think we can see that 
those beliefs, those expectations are foundational in what our society is and come to be. We've dismissed lightly, oh, it's a story, it's a fiction. These fictions are fundamental in our whole living, our whole society. I mean, the cause of great blessings and great problems, if you get them wrong. And uh, we live in the consequence of these beliefs written into our legends and myths and uh, foundation of our culture. You know, we put them under the headings of religion and uh, beliefs and um, philosophy and so on. But they have molded our character and our ability to cope or not cope and react in certain ways to certain situations. From your happiness point of view, you must choose what you find to be the best and most serviceable. And follow such. It's as basic and simple as that. We are children growing up. We stumble across certain things that help and become a great blessing and pursue such. And one of those astonishing things is understanding what we value, choosing what we value, according to the fruits that we find from such. You know, does uh, dwelling on the about past evils and problems and fears about the future bring happiness? No. How do we school the mind to do otherwise? Practice of looking on the bright side in casual everyday philosophy. More deeply, practice of loving God. And being in an experienced thankfulness, gratitude to him, transforms your whole state of being into something quite heavenly. And you stumble across these simple solutions to life that are everything to life eternal, to abundance of life, to your well-being. It seems trivial, it seems ethereal in that it, it doesn't seem, you know, I mean, how can something so, so non-material be so important to life? Because life is non-material. There are material inferences and consequences of life. But life itself is not material. It's, if you like, in another dimension. But it's the one that you truly live in, not the material show of the material universe that we think it is. We've identified with the wrong substance, I was going to say, <laughs> with material substance instead of what we value, 
what we love. What love is and who we really are. And if I say children of God, I mean that that very simplistically is the fundamental solution to the problem. And that's what the Jesus story is about. He calls God Dad over a hundred times in John's Gospel alone. It is the message of the Gospel that you appreciate God as Dad, friendly, all capable, loves you to bits, your Dad. And that view so transforms your life. to give you life eternal. All blessings by His grace and loving kindness. Taste and see. Prove me wrong. <laughs> you won't. You will prove me right. Bless you and you are blessed. God brings you to this time. Now is the time for glory. It's always now in the present. Amazingly. Always. So loving God. Who makes eternity possible for you. In fact he makes it unavoidable because he loves us. Thank you, Heavenly.